Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're taking a look at an end game tier list over on Analytica. Now these guys have the, I think they're the rank one guild on server one. They got a ton of whales and free to play players testing out a lot of things in depth ever since the uh, the PTR like a year ago. So they have a lot of information on the end game because a lot of their players are there uh, from the PTR. And massive shout out to Season who runs Analytica for giving me the rundown on all the reasonings for these positionings uh, in this tier list. Now, this once again is end game so campaign does not come into it now they've done a little google spreadsheet to explain things but essentially this is taking into account the end game modes that are dream realm arena and battle drill because once you get to the end game campaign isn't really as much of an issue afk stages don't yield you massive returns for the progression that you push so that's why this is only focusing on the, those three things now over at pride win uh, on their website they still have that great tier list going through early game mid game and stuff like this but but I really wanted to dive in, look at the end game so you guys can see where the game is heading. But keep in mind, as we get new features and new characters, this will adjust. But let's go through, and I want to go through, especially like the top few tiers of characters and explain their positionings and why these characters are so good into the late game. Um, so once again, they have this here where they rated them based on Dream Realm, Arena, and Battle Drill are the main end game modes. So you can see how they've ranked the characters to get their overall score here. So if we take a look at, at Arena here, you can see things like Iron is absolutely amazing because Iron Carolina teams or Carolina teams, they just absolutely dominate the meta in the current state. You can look at Dream Realm, you can see Rainier. Obviously this is end game, so that's being at at least Mythic Plus to get Rainier up here. Um, Merrily, Corrin, Odie, just fantastic units. It's great to see three elite heroes in the top ranking characters for this mode. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Once again, they go through even individual bosses to give you an idea. Once again, this being end game, so high investment. Don't take this into account early game because Corrin and Merrily aren't the greatest in the early, early game. Once they get a bit more invested, that's when they start to shine. So just wanted to get those disclaimers out of the way, but let's take a look at it. So and the EX tier is like your top tier, the S plus, the SS tier, everyone calls it something different. So we have Smokey. Smokey is an amazing healer in everything, pretty much. Now there are just some situations and he's also a great buffer on top of that. And there are some situations where he can get interrupted. If we look at Snow Stomper and stuff like that, obviously he's not gonna shine there. He has his few downfalls, but in general for any kind of content, he is a fantastic healer slash uh, buffing unit for just about any team. Then we have Odie. Now Odie is in this one because he just works well in everything. He's a great bossing unit. Some would argue that Meryl Lee is better end game at bossing uh, in some boss fights, but Odie also has the functionality of being decent in PVP as well and battle drills as well. Like not the best in battle drills, but still decent, but also same thing in PvP, has some viability because once he gets his execute, he can actually snowball in PvP as well. So Odie is fantastic right the way through. Then we have Thorin. Thorin basically being your number one tank choice in just about every form of the game. He has de uh, the debuff that he can amplify damage. Then he also has damage himself with reflect and he has the revive. There's just no, there's no area in the game where Thorin is bad. He's just an absolute fantastic unit. Now, when we look to these Celestial and Hypergene units, I always like to caution this. Don't go looking at DNL being top tier in this one and be like, okay, he must be the unit I go for. Um, basically this is more niche once again when we look to max investment uh so when you look at dream realm you can see he's only ones across the board here uh, as we get into arena you'll see that he is a four on both offense and defense so they rate him very highly in the arena and in battle drill uh if we go ahead and look at him he's a two and a two so being the great in battle drill so he's not great in dream realm but arena and battle drill are where he really shines and that makes up his score for why he rates in that ex tier um now, he is just a, a purely damage-focused unit, fantastic. Whereas when we look at Scarleta, she's also controlled different form of damage. She can avoid cheat deaths and stuff like that. But this is just through their testing. I can't elaborate too much on this personally because I haven't been able to test these guys, obviously, at endgame. I'm not a Giga Whale. Uh, but that is those two placements. And then, obviously, Rainier. We all know the gist behind Rainier. He can transpose. And then he also has the damage amplification, which is absolutely huge, along with being able to heal the ally that he transposes 
positions. So when we look at arena, very useful. When we look at any kind of bossing, very useful. Uh, same in battle drill. So just an all round fantastic unit in the end game modes. Then we jump down into the S tier. So now we start filling out more characters. We have Vala. Now Vala, when we take a look at her, when we look at the core modes that we're talking about, the thing with her is she's very good in PvP on offense to counter specific enemies. But then we look into bossing, and you may think bossing, yeah, she's not the greatest. She's one of those units that in a lot of the Dream Realm bosses, she's a viable option, but not the top tier option. So she gets good average scores. However, when we look to things like um, in the battle drills, when you get the boss below 50% and she can instantly activate sword form. Honestly, if, if, if there was a setting for Vala before battle where you could choose whether you want her to always use sword form or um, gun form, and you could select sword form for boss fights, she'd be right up there. But unfortunately, when an enemy is, when a boss is above 50%, she just loses out on that viability of damage, but she can definitely deal damage on bosses. Uh, when we take a look at, especially if we look at something like, uh, let's go over here into the battle drill, uh, and we look for Vala, where is she? Here she is. So like a two in bossing, because once you get that boss below 50%, she can absolutely train the damage in. Uh, Corrin, True damage, shielding, support, just an all-round great unit. Once you get him max duped, fantastic. Merrily, once again, another one of those prime units for damage dealing uh, once you get her uh, highly highly invested. So just all-round great uh, damage dealers there. The reason these two are in S tier instead of EX tier is because they don't have the arena viability of something like Odie. He has more spread viability, whereas these two are very set for bossing, essentially. Uh, and then we look at uh, Temesia. She is just one of those units that's good in everything, but not like best in slot in anything, except for maybe um, the dragon boss. But like, she's just one of those units that performs really well in everything. In arena, she's disruptive. She gets enemies to chase her, then they disengage, go for something else, and they chase her again. She has the control. She's just a really disruptive unit, but also has some very decent damage that she can ramp up to as well. Then we look at Shakir. Now, Shakir is in here because not so much PvP viability, but everywhere in bossing, he is fantastic. He is a melee buffer as well, as well as dealing decent damage himself and being very sustainable in, him, in himself. He buffs melee units. So when you look at bossing, especially, especially when we look into those execute teams using Vala and even Seth in some situations, when the boss is below 50% because they both get buffed below 50%, you run those two. And because in that situation, Vala is in melee range and you've got Seth who an amazing buffer for those melee units so he's one of those ones that i also think as more melee more good melee units come out that become more meta he will become more meta himself because he's good at buffing the haste of those melee units and helping them deal more damage so he's just an all-round good unit in general, uh, across the board. Then Coco. Coco is just an absolute fantastic unit. I didn't look into her too much in PTR because she was the last unit to come out in the PTR, but she is fantastic for bossing, great for survivability against nukes that would otherwise kill you. Uh, buffing as well, she's got that attack buff on top of that. Uh, once you get her more invested, she gets the shields. Just an all-round great unit, in my opinion. And can be not, not so much used in PvP, but more for the bossing sides of things in both Dream Realm and Battle Drills. That's where she shines. Then we have Brian, uh, the man that I always think should be named Brian. But uh, this guy, basically, the way he, the reason he's up here, because it's very interesting, because when we look to something like Iron, and I always like to analyze these things based on like, okay, tier list, top tier, should you wishlist them, stuff like that. Iron really shines on wishlist priority because he is so like he's so dominant in campaign as well for the early push and iron is more dominant in pvp iron kind of is the pvp meta at the moment in the end game him in, in carolina teams the problem is iron doesn't have viability in bossing he does have a magic defense shred but from what season told me is that in their testing the magic defense shred that he has its uptime is so pitiful that it doesn't really allow him to shine anywhere in bossing he shines in 
battle drills for clearing the the trash mobs and then he shines in pvp whereas he loses out in all the rest of the boss fights whereas bryon is even though he isn't the best damage dealer for boss fights he's still acceptable if you have him and he's also really synergistic in some pvp teams as well so that is why he gets up to s and something like iron is still down to a but i would still definitely recommend having iron as your priority on the wish list uh then we move into uh Cecilia, and Cecilia is another one of those units where she's not really best in slot for anything but she's good she's she's good at everything so she's decent she's good in pvp she's viable she's not the meta but she's definitely viable and same with bossing she can do decent damage but she's not the best battle drills uh she's really good at clearing trash mobs um and then she's acceptable at bossing so she's one of those units that even though she's not the meta for anything she's just acceptable everywhere and like I said, I'm not going to go too deep into Scarleta uh, in uh, the um, Celestial Hyper Gens because I don't have as much input to put into those. Uh, then as we go down into A tier, Rowan, because he's not the greatest at bossing, he's not the greatest at PvP, but he's tech usage in some of these and some of them he's just not as great at uh, for the bossing. So he's a great unit when you need him and you can use him. And in PvP and tech situations when you need a potion, the energy potion, I feel like he will get pushed up in certain team comps as that energy potion becomes more uh, important. But at the moment, he just doesn't have the same level of shine as some of the other characters. Then we've got Wave Girl. I always forget her name. Um, but, you know, she has decent buffing the way she uses her... Um that, that buff that she does where she gets all the extra snowballing extra damage and she can be used for that she has a bit of extra control so she can be used in bosses she can be used in arena but not so much in arena as bosses and she's sort of on the lower tier of being like decent at everything and that's why she falls there seth uh seth sort of fell out of meta for pvp but great at bossing like i mentioned kind of similar to vala in that he is good in those execution style teams him vala and shakir can do really well in those types of teams but you know he's one that for a lot of people you won't build him for a long time because you are probably going for coco and Odie anyway uh, and then obviously we have kruger kruger just shines in bossing for the death shred that's pretty much where his niche is Iran already spoke about him uh fantastic for arena just like a top tier arena unit also fantastic for campaign afk stage pushing and stuff like that then we have um what's her face hewan Hewan gets better at Mythic Plus because then she gets starting energy. She gets her ult faster. And that is where she really does start to shine. And that's where she can be more functional. Before that, she really feels kind of average because your team's always dead before she can ult. But she does get that viability. So she can be used as a sustained unit in bossing. She can be used in some PvP teams as well. So she's like, once again, the, all these units are falling into either excellent at one thing and useless at everything else, or just kind of like across the board, okay. Uh, same goes for Granny. Granny can be used in some of those PvP teams as well where you're focusing on control with Iron and stuff like that. Iron, Arden, and all those sorts of units in those teams. Uh, but for bossing, she's not that great. She doesn't have the debuff like Thorin. She doesn't really shine there. Damien, once again, Damien gets really good in PvP because he has the extra haste buff at Mythic Plus, which is absolutely fantastic. Leica has the attack speed buff. Um, so Leica is also one of those other units that is tech viable in situations. And then Arden works really well in those control-based teams with Iron as well. Um, so he's fantastic for that. Then for Parisa, I had to look up her name. I always forget her name. Um, she's one of those units that is like okay around the board, but just like no one's really building her. She doesn't really shine too bright. You've got Arden, you've got Damien that you're already really wanting to build anyway. Uh, so she's, I don't think many people will see the light of day with her just because if we get new characters as well, by the time you get around to it, you're probably not going to have her, but she is a decently viable unit. Then we have Carolina. Now Carolina's great in PvE as well, uh, but obviously this doesn't take into account that because she works with the Euron teams, but that's where PvP is her thing. Not so much bossing, PvP PvP uh, is where she shines because she has that control aspect that synergizes so well with the Iron, and that is where is her place. Then we have Igor. Igor can do decently at battle drills as well. Um, not so much at bossing, but he can be really great in arena. So he's another one of those units, probably not as strong in my opinion as Carolina because he doesn't have that one complete... Uh, 
situation where he dominates but he's still a pretty good unit that annoying stall type thing makes him great for arena defense and stuff like that then we have Nero uh Nero can actually use this immortality thing once he gets his uh mythic plus where he can put it on something like an eagle and then they just the enemy can't kill your team because eagle has the buff he keeps jumping around and Nero can do this like really annoying style play that can be really frustrating in certain situations and that's like his sort of main niche that he can use in pvp and stuff like that and then we have uh, uh bur bur burial uh this dude's uh, once again pvp unit focused um uh, he really saps an enemy and then if he dies he hides in the shadows if an enemy dies he comes back and does his annoying stuff again and that's sort of where he's focused i ain't gonna go deep into b and c tier these are the units that are kind of the you know the leftovers brutus obviously fantastic for campaign early game same with antandra but they don't have the end game usage viperian has a little bit of usage same with sylvina in arena but just don't really shine anywhere else and these units once again Again, these units this isn't saying they're never going to be good they're absolute trash but no one's found a use for them yet and that's kind of where it falls so that is going to be it for this tier list if you want i'll leave a link to the description if you want to go have a look at it yourself and have a look at the spreadsheet the spreadsheet is just linked at the very top here in the google sheets and you can go check out the ratings for each character in each area once again it's a tier list it's subjective but i like covering these things so as always guys thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i look forward to seeing the next one cheers